Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another video. And this one for the 10 year challenge that everyone and their brother keeps posting on social media where you take a picture of yourself from 10 years ago and put it next to a picture of yourself from today, I will be recreating a childhood sculpture. Which childhood sculpture? This little guy right here. He is a little wizard dude that I made when I was like 12 and it's one of my first sculpts. He ends up looking a little something like this. So if you wanna see how I made him, then keep on watching. Okay, just to give you guys a little bit of background on this guy, um, he is the evil wizard from this world that I created when I was like 12 years old. And he's also one of my first sculpts. And I mean, if you can't tell that he's evil, just look into his red eyes. <laughs> it doesn't get much more evil than that, does it? He also has a name too, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is because it's so stupid. Anyway, yeah, there's not much more to say about him. Let's start the video. All right, the first step to sculpting this figurine is to create the armature. I'm using 12 gauge aluminum jewelry wire and I'm shaping out his torso and the lower half of his body. Trimming off the end there with my wire cutters. And then twisting out the bottom half. Since he's wearing a robe, I don't need to make individual legs and it's just one piece like that. Now I'm creating the arms and I'm following the shape of the shoulders to bend those out. And just to give this guy a little bit more character, I'm gonna exaggerate some of his features, um, some of those being his arms. I'm gonna make them a little longer than I would for a normal figurine. Now I'm attaching the arms to the shoulders using masking tape. You can also use wire for this, but masking tape is easier and faster and I'm all about easier and faster. <laughs> Once that's done, it's time to start bulking out his robes. I am starting with the bottom half, just shaping them out roughly with aluminum foil and then attaching it to my wire armature with masking tape. Then I'm also going to bulk out his torso and attach that as well. And the next step is of course to cover the entire thing in clay. I'm using beige Super Sculpey as always and I'm just smoothing it around the entire surface making sure it's as perfect as possible and removing any air bubbles and really getting it ready for the details. Sort of shaping out the bottom of his ropes here. And now it's time to put on some nice big windy looking wrinkles. And to make that I just rolled out a snake that tapered at the end, flattened it out a little bit. And I'm arranging it on top of the bottom half of his body the way that I like it. And then I'm going to blend the edges in with the rest of the piece. And I'm going to repeat this step until I have as many wrinkles as I want. Like I said, I want this to look like the wind's blowing a little bit. I don't want it just to be straight up and down. That's boring. Got to keep it interesting. I always love sculpting fra fabric like this. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do. All right, now I'm just bulking out his arms and sleeves with aluminum foil, and then I'm going to cover that in clay as well and then repeating that step on the other side. The sleeves were a little complicated to do just because I don't normally make sleeves like this and this was probably one of the first times I've ever done this. So it was kind of a learning experience for me but in the end I'm happy with how it turns out and that's always good. Now I'm just adding some wrinkles to those using the same method that I did for his bottom half, just with a snake of clay, blending it into the edges and then repeating that process over and over again until I'm satisfied. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always loved Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all this like fantasy stuff. So back in the day when I was like collecting the action figures and stuff, like. I wanted in on that so I made my whole own little world that is really stupid now but I mean I was always like a super creative kid and I was always trying to come up with something whether I was like making movies or just being artistic like I, my brain was just constantly running and I lost some of that now and I kind of miss it but I'm a little more chill these days. All right, now I am making him a little belt. I know the original sculpture doesn't have that, but I 
need to add some more details because I didn't really give myself much to work with in that original design. Now I need to attach the neck and to do that I'm using a bamboo skewer that I pierced the top with and pushed it in and then sculpted around it for the neck. Now it's time to create the top of his robes. I just used a piece of clay from my pasta maker and I'm cutting out the shapes that I need to match those like shoulder areas that the original one has. Just blending that together. I'm not too worried about what the back looks like because that's going to be covered with a cape. I'm just making the shoulders a little pointy and now it's time to start the head. The head was a blast to make. Um, just because I didn't have to worry about it looking like anyone in particular. Like I could just make it up as I go. And that's always the most fun for me. It's really, really hard to sculpt likenesses. And I'll probably do a video on it in the future. But like it's not my favorite thing to do. Just because you there's, there is a right and wrong to what you're doing. And it's somewhat like restricting. And you just it's just matching it to something that already exists is really hard. No matter what you're sculpting, honestly, if you're trying to match something else that's already out there, it's really hard. So again, I had fun doing this because I could just make it up myself and do whatever I wanted. Now this is my method that I use for making eyes. Like you saw, I used a little bean shaped piece of clay that I added to the eye sockets and then pressed out the eye area with my little, looks like a mini butter knife, that's what people call it. Whatever that tool is, um, I just showed, sort of rocked it back and forth to create that eye shape. And now I'm working on his brows or his brow bone, his crazy supernatural looking brow bone. Just using my spoon tool to blend all that out. And then making this head was extremely satisfying for me because I did everything right on the first try. I didn't screw up and have to start over or redo anything. So. I love when that happens. It makes me enjoy sculpting so much more. I hate when I screw up and I have to start over. Like seriously, there's nothing worse than putting a ton of time into something just to have to smash it up and do it again. And then I, I left a lot of the footage in of the head just so you guys could get an idea for how I sculpt heads. I haven't really done a figurine head yet for YouTube, so um, I made sure to leave a lot of this footage in so you could see the entire process. I didn't cut anything out. Just using my mini ball stylus there. Now I'm creating his lower bottom lip. Um, he's going to have a mustache so he doesn't need a top lip. It's kind of a shortcut and he's like an old man too so doesn't need no crazy top lip. I'm attaching his nose like so. Noses are really hard for me to do. And they're not my favorite thing to do because they are hard. But um, exaggerated noses like this are a lot easier than subtle tiny ones. So I guess I had that going for me with this. And I wanted to make it big like the original piece, but I didn't want it to look like a witch. So I kept it on the smaller side, but still exaggerated. poking out the nostrils and just shaping out the nose with that tiny ball stylus. Blending, 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 blending. You can refine a face for hours on top of hours on top of hours. There's so much detail that you can add. It's such a, a blast, honestly. Now I'm just giving him some cheekbones without making it look like he has too much Botox. Just want to give him that gaunt look. Adding some wrinkles, smile lines, and it's time to attach. To attach it, I am just going to press it into the skewer that's in his body with a little bit of bacon bond for added reinforcement. Just being very careful, I don't smash anything. Normally, I pre-bake the heads, but for some reason, I didn't feel the need to on this guy. And I didn't smash it, so that's awesome. Now I'm just adding his beard. And the original sculpture on that, the beard goes all the way to the ground. That was a little much for me, so I shortened it a little bit, but it is still ridiculously long. And there's his mustache, and now it's time to draw all the lines 
and details in the beard. All of these lines on his beard took me, I think, like a good solid half hour to do. Just because they all had to be perfectly straight, or not perfectly straight, but like even with each other and um, nicely spaced out so it didn't just look like a bunch of random lines. So that took a minute. Now I'm just brushing the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints and smooth everything out. And there are a few other methods that I want to try for this. I know I've been getting a lot of comments from people saying I should try rubbing alcohol, so I do want to try that out soon. All right, now to make the cape, I'm just adding one even sheet of aluminum foil in between two pieces of clay that I pressed through my pasta maker on, I think, the three or four setting. And this is a pretty good method. You do have to watch out for air bubbles and cracks after you bake it, but it's nothing that can't be patched and fixed. And it works good for me. And then I just cut out the shape of the cape that I wanted and textured it and attached it to his body with some bacon bond in multiple areas. I only show the one area, but I do edit to other areas. And now it's time for the first bake. And then after he's baked, it's time to do the hair. I always pre-bake my figurines before I put the hair on because you can just imagine how much you would smash the face if you were trying to do this if, and it was uncured. So that's always great to do. Just attaching the hair. And to do the two pieces on either side of his head, I reinforce that with a piece of my jewelry wire just so it's not super fragile. This does help a lot. Couple more details here. And then it'll be time for 50 kabillion more lines. There we go. I was really happy with how this guy was turning out at this point. And like I said before, I just want to keep those lines looking pretty uniform so it doesn't look messy and try to make as many as possible to go all the way from the top to the bottom. And then just filling it in with shorter ones in between wherever they fit. All right, now it's time to create his staff. Um, I know the original one doesn't have a staff, but he did at one point. It just broke off and I kind of remember what it looked like. So I'm just recreating it from memory here. And it's just a ball with like some little claw things holding it in place and then another detail around the middle and then to attach it to him i just bent that jewelry wire where his hand is going to go and stuck it in now i'm creating the hands another non-favorite of mine <laughs> i really hate making hands you just have to you can't avoid it. it just sucks that you gotta make two of them every time now i'm attaching the one hand to him by just wrapping it around the staff and that piece of wire and then adding some more clay to the sleeves to complete that part of them. Adding the other hand that I sculpted off camera. Another sleeve adjustment here and then now I'm coating his staff with bacon bond and this just puts a nice coating on that bamboo skewer that I used. Now it's time to paint after he's been baked. And one great tip for painting, if you're doing multiple coats especially, blow dry it in between coats. It speeds up the drying process so much, especially if you use a warm setting. I love it. And I just started doing it in this video. I don't know why I haven't before. Now I'm adding some highlights here. And now some shadows with some dark brown. To make this brown, I mixed his flesh color with some brown, <laughs> obviously. Now I'm darkening the area around his eyes, just like the original. Now when I'm doing this, how I paint him is not how I really wanted to paint him, but because this is a quote unquote challenge, I had to do it as close to the original as possible. I didn't want to alter too many things because then it wouldn't be a challenge. So, I mean, if I could have had free reign with this guy, he would have looked much cooler than how he turned out. But, I mean, like, the last color I wanted to paint him is purple, but, and with swirlies all over it, but I had to do it. I had to stay true to the original, and 
that's what I did. Just give him a nice upgrade and go with that. Just adding some eye details here. Now some eyebrows. This was not a good eyebrow day for me for some reason. I don't know why. But they turned out fine. Normally I'm a lot faster at them. That took a couple minutes to do. All right now it's time for the first coat of purple paint. I did not plan this guy out well at all. I did not keep painting him in mind when I sculpted him because it was a huge pain to paint him. Like... I could not fit my paintbrush in so many different spots. It's insane. And there are parts of him that you can't see, but that aren't painted. <laughs> like, I don't know if you'll get a glimpse of it eventually, but like where his cape meets his body, there's spots that aren't painted and stuff. But you, like I said, you don't notice them, but it was just a huge pain. All right, time for that satisfying second coat that looks great. Love that. It took forever to paint him. Like I said, it was so hard to paint him. Now I'm just adding some highlights here by dry brushing some light purple that I made by adding white to the purple that I used for his robes. Painting his hair and his beard straight up black, just like the original. Again, I wouldn't have painted his hair black if I had the choice, but he's got to look like the original guy. Using my fine paintbrush to do those areas where the black meets the skin color. And then another thing here, if you can hold your sculpture in a bunch of weird positions and like upside down and all that, um, you know you did the armature correctly. I'm just painting up his staff, dark brown. That little orb thing at the top is red. Getting in there, making sure no spots missed. Now it's time to paint all those lovely swirls that look like an area rug from 1999. Um, yeah, to do those, I used some satin varnish. I didn't use a color. I wanted them to still be there because I want to stay true to the original, but at the same time, I don't want them to be like super in your face. So, and I only do his sleeves. And it looks pretty good. He's a pretty fancy, like, kind of dated wizard, but that's okay. Now I'm just adding some metallic bronze and then some color shift red to the orb. And the color shift red looks really cool because it goes from red to purple. You can kind of see it in the video here. And then now I'm dry brushing some gray onto his beard and hair. In the original, it looks like I just like slapped some white all over the place and we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to do this way. Adding some more bronze accents to his staff and he's done. My remake of my little wizard guy that I made God knows how many years ago is finally complete and this is his new version. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's a wrap everyone. I had so much fun recreating this little guy from my childhood and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me do it. If you did, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, then follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.